Welcome to Lemons.com and a lab video series on Cisco SD-WAN 20.9. This is Matha, your instructor for this video series. For a complete list of SD-WAN videos, you can visit our website in the routing switching section. There you can also sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. Welcome back to Lab Minute's next video series on advanced Cisco SD-WAN. In the last video series, we spent a lot of time building basic foundation around different SD-WAN deployment models and what's required to bring up site-to-site -site connectivity. Because this video series is a continuation of that, we are going to assume that you have either watched the basic video series or already have some knowledge of Cisco SD-WAN. If not, we highly recommend you review the basic video series first. In this series, we will be using Cisco SD-WAN version 20.9 because that's was what we upgraded to at the end of the last series from 20.8 and our focus is still going to be on iOS XE devices. If it just came out of the basic series, we are going to take a little break from all the configuration in this videos and talk about a very important concept that will take up the majority of this video series, which is SD-WAN policy. Policy in Cisco SD-WAN is what the software-defined capability is all about. Policy configuration allows you to control traffic routing and treatments in SD-WAN overlay, so there's no doubt that you will be dealing with the policy in your own SD-WAN deployment. Because the concept of policy can be a little overwhelming at first, you definitely want to take some time to understand policy intents and options before diving into the configuration of it. And that's what we are going to be doing in this video. Here is the diagram that I would use to help explain SD-WAN policy. Let's start with some key terminologies that we see here. All right, first is the control policy. So control policy is all about route manipulation, whether it is with OMP, which is an overlay routing protocol or local routing protocols like BGP, OSP, FEA, GRP. You use control policy to dictate how routes would appear in the device routing table, which have a direct effect on how traffic will be routed. So that's control policy. Next, we have the data policy. Similar to control policy that affects control plane, the data policy affects the data plane. Data policy deals with actual data packet. It works based on packet matching and then takes certain action. So there is a lot of things that you can do as far as packet matching go for the condition standpoints, as you will see in a little bit. The other term that you want to know is centralized policy. So centralized policy means that the configuration is deployed in a central location, which is going to be vSmart. And that in turn gets distributed to Edge devices. As a counterpart of centralized policy, you have the localized policy, which means that the configuration is deployed directly onto edge devices. So with this, when you combine the control, the data, the centralized, the localized, you end up with four main type of policy, which is centralized control policy, centralized data policy, localized control policy, and localized data policy. So now let's discuss each one in more detail. Starting off with the centralized control policy. As you already know, edge devices advertise OMP, T-Log, and service routes to vSmart over OMP session. At the same time, they learn routes that are advertised by other edge devices from vSmart. Because vSmart act as a central route exchange point, it is the most logical place to perform any route manipulation. Centralized control policy allows you to do exactly that to routes that are either advertised to or from vSmart. And there are two types of policies that falls under the centralized control policy category, and that is topology and VPN membership. 